So we added to Urbanson this concept of the data frame explorer, which would be used to um, take pandas data frames of disaggregate data like buildings and aggregate them up to some aggregate shape like a zone and navigate it in leaflet. And GeoPandas has now come along and there's such a thing as a geo data frame which reads in shape files. And so I wanted to test integration, integrating the UrbanSim data frame explorer with geo data frames. So here is uh, my prototype for that, which seems to be working pretty well. Um, this is the Python notebook, and I have imported the data frame explorer and also GeoPandas, and I'm reading in a shape file and setting an index appropriately. Um, I'm actually reading in a GeoJSON file, but uh, GeoPandas also reads shape files, so you can read a Esri shape file just as easily. And then I am going to execute this second cell, and in a couple of seconds, it will open up a new tab in my Chrome web browser. And so everything I'm doing here is going to happen in a few tabs in my web browser. I am leaving the notebook. In fact, I don't even know that I'm in the notebook anymore. I'm just navigating a slippy web map, a leaflet web map. And you can see I've gone to the Bay Area. It's a regional scale shapefile. It spans the whole nine county region. And I will pick an attribute from the shapefile, land acres. So dark blue means a very large zone and yellow means a very small zone. You can see the legend down here in the lower right hand corner. I can change the color scheme to all of the color brewer color schemes. Some of them are certainly more pleasant than others. <laughs> um, I have quantile and equal interval coloring in the map. Um, equal interval gives me mostly yellow because there are some massively sized zones. So quantile is maybe more appropriate for this. I have different aggregations available to me, but because I'm just looking at a single shape file, I'm not aggregating data really, so these don't apply. Uh, the use case we'll see for these is um, aggregating disaggregate data, like the number of buildings in a zone, and we'll see an example of that shortly. Um, the first box here allows me to run filters or um, uh, pandas queries, pandas uh, data frame dot query uh, language, so land acre less than a thousand. These, uh, every zone that is larger than a thousand acres no longer has color applied to it, which is nice. And then this final one is for running pandas uh, data frame dot evals, or, or very simple expressions, similar to SQL. Um, here is one which is population divided by land acre. So this would be population density in San Francisco and Oakland. And so now I'm looking at this variable I computed from the attributes of my shapefile. I could have done that in, on the Python side in the notebook, but I could do it right here if that's more convenient for me. So this is an example of navigating uh, a shapefile directly, but my favorite use case is um, in navigating disaggregate data, um, and a lot of it. Um, I should make the point here while we're looking at it, this cell is still running. It's actually serving pandas queries for the data that's in the notebook to the web page over here. So every time I um, click uh, these buttons or hit enter in one of these cells, then uh, it's actually running a query in my notebook. And this cell has control. It's in a loop waiting for to serve requests. To get back control of the notebook, I hit stop so that it will no longer be serving requests. Um, if I went back over here and did something, I would get an error. Um, yeah, so. Um, the color schemes actually run in the client, but any of the uh, switching attributes or running queries or computing an, an expression would execute query. 
So now that I'm back in the notebook, <clears throat> I'm going to execute a couple more cells. Uh, first, I'm going to import the urban sim simulation framework, and then I'm going to create a dictionary of data frames using the urban sim simulation framework. Um, the framework's a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but suffice it to say, I'm making a dictionary where keys are strings, which are names of the data frames, and then the data frames have a bunch of attributes. And this is a good amount of data for buildings, jobs, and households in the Bay Area. Roughly uh, 1.5 million buildings, roughly 2.5 million jobs, or 4 million jobs and 2.5 million households, and they're all getting read in from different places, computing different variables, um, moving things around from parcels to buildings and to jobs and households and that sort of thing. Um, but in the end, I just get a dictionary of data frames. And any dictionary of data frames that has a shape ID, which joins to the shapes and the leaflet map will work here. So I can call this and in a couple of seconds, it will automatically open a leaflet tab so here comes my tab, here come my shapes. I'm back in the Bay Area. Only this time, instead of just having my local attributes from the shape file itself, I also have my disaggregate data that I passed in the dictionary and buildings, households, and jobs. So I can do something like, um, let's see, residential units, um, sum. So this would be the sum of residential units. Um, or I could do something like mean. This would be the mean number of residential units and buildings in a zone. So wherever there are larger multifamily buildings, it would show up darker here. There are other aggregations like um, median or 75th percentile, um, but note, note that median is, um, they're almost all ones because single family housing is so prevalent. So, I mean, this is really sort of an interesting way to navigate my data, whereas the max number of units is 816, which is um, the maximum number of units in one development, I suppose. Um, some would probably be the thing I use the most frequently. Um, I can flip to, let's see, households, and then I probably want to sum the number of persons. So this would be my population, um, every household that's in a zone, I'm summing the attribute of people, so that's actually summing the number of people in a zone, and jobs has a similar attribute, imp11, but, but this would be the number of employees in the establishment that the job belongs to, so it's a bit misleading. Um, when I with jobs, I actually want to use the size attribute, which is the number of jobs on the zone. And so I can look at something like this, which is 13,707 jobs in zone 17. Um, I should note that you know it's a interactive clickable map, 1156, the, the zone 1156 has uh, 1,113 jobs in the zone. And you know I can always navigate out I can drag it around just like a Google map. And so this is an example of aggregating disaggregate data on the fly. Remember, every time I click one of these buttons, I'm running a query over here, which is running a pandas group by. You can see each one of these is actually one of those group buys with an aggregation and a specific attribute that it's aggregating, and then it, it joins it to the shapes and then colors the shapes. And that's essentially how this works. And it's kind of nice because I can, I'm serving these queries from the notebook, I can go to the web browser and navigate around my data and the map very transparently, not even know that the notebook exists. And then I can come back here and say, tweak some analysis that I'm doing, um, and then start up the Data Frame Explorer again and run it and over and over again with a, a full size, full screen map um, in the other tab. 
And the, the final thing that I want to point out is this is how the Data Frame Explorer originally worked. You are not required to have GeoPandas installed and be using a GeoData Frame. All you really need is a GeoJSON file, which can be read uh, by Leaflet. Leaflet knows all about GeoJSON. And so that's how Leaflet gets its shapes. And then any data frame that has um, an ID that matches the ID for those shapes can be used to, to color them. Um, you don't actually need a geo, uh, GeoPandas GeoData frame, but um, my hope is that GeoPandas will sort of become ubiquitous and read in all sorts of geospatial data. And so you can do interactive navigation like this with the GeoData frame with very little trouble. So um, I hope you find this interesting. Um, feel free to send me any questions you might have. Um, and I hope uh, some, some of you find this useful. Thanks.